Joining me now, representing Florida's 17th Congressional District, Congressman Greg Stubbe. Congressman, thank you so much for joining me. I was a little bit surprised that Nancy Pelosi wasn't challenged. I thought there would be a bigger battle this time around. Yeah, but as a lot of people have said, if not her, but if not her, then who? Um, I don't know who would uh, challenge her and have the votes to take her on. But what's interesting is she won the vote within her caucus which is a majority of the Democrats there voting, she still has to get to 218 votes on the floor of the House of Representatives. There's 11 Democratic incumbents who got reelected who did not vote for her last election cycle two years ago for Speaker. She's going to have to flip several of those, five or six, depending on the number of Republican seats that we win. So I think it's actually going to be very interesting to watch on the floor when those votes are called how she gets to 218 votes. Because if those are moderate members that are forced to vote for her or feel obligated to vote for her, they may not be successful in 2022 when they're running for re-election. Yeah, which may explain why she was begging some uh, of those in the House to not consider leaving for a, the Biden transition team or working in the Biden administration because she was so concerned about probably her future as well as uh, securing enough votes uh, going forward. Yeah, I mean, if she's if, if we're at like 212 to 214, then she's only going to have six votes to lose. So you've got Cedric Richmond that if Biden holds on, he will go to the administration. Um, so every vote that that every person that leaves, that's a vote that's going to go against her because she's not going to have that vote in the caucus and she's going to have to get to 218. Yeah, I would be shocked to see this happen, because that means that there's a lot of moderate members in very moderate districts they would have to vote for her to get to that 218 number. And that would definitely hurt them in 2022 when they run for re-election. Yeah. And I wanted to congratulate you. You won re-election with about 65 percent of the vote in your district. So that's incredible. I wanted to get your thoughts on all the polling before the election. We were told there's going to be a blue wave and that Democrats were just going to just, you know, win it all. Turns out that the polling was wrong. I think, you know, we all kind of predicted it would be wrong because it's been wrong a lot and then no one is ever held accountable and the pollsters do just fine. Um, but yeah, De House Democrats lost a lot of seats and the Republican Party is certainly growing more diverse. So right before the election, this shocked me, Fox News had said that we're going to lose 10 seats and that the Democratic majority was going to grow by 10 seats. And wouldn't you know it that we're now at 12 seats that the Republicans have won, a complete reverse from what uh, major media segments were saying. And that just goes to show you that they don't know what they're talking about, that their polling is completely off. Just look at Florida, for example. The president increased his margin on Joe Biden from 108,000 votes against Hillary Clinton in 2016 to almost 400,000 votes statewide in the state of Florida. And, and pollsters were saying he was going to lose by four to six points, maybe even 10 points, depending on what poll he looked at. So completely wrong on all of their calculations. Yeah, and there's a couple of reasons. I mean, people, uh, President Trump believes that this effort to show the polling with Democrats, you know, winning by so much kind of it's, it suppresses the vote. Uh, people, why would they go door knock? Why would they donate to a losing campaign? And, and we see this over and over again. Now, all eyes are on the state of Georgia and the Senate runoffs. And there's obviously so much at stake here. Democrats and Republicans are going to be spending a lot of time there trying to get their candidates elected. Uh, how important is it that Republicans take this seriously? This this is uh, this is major. This is going to decide the direction of our country. I was actually just going to say the same thing. This is going to determine the direction of our country for the next two to four years, maybe four to six years. But here's the here's the challenge. If for some reason the Republicans lose those Senate seats and you have a Democratic majority in the Senate, they're going to do away with the filibuster. They're going to get D.C. in as a state, Puerto Rico in as a state and hope that they get four more Democratic members for the Senate and completely overrule all the things that the Republicans want to do in this country. Our, our country's direction is determined of what happens in Georgia. In January, we had a call today with House Republicans, uh, with Senator Perdue to try to rally the troops across the country to get him as much support as he absolutely can. I'm going to be reaching out this week to my supporters and people that are willing to travel to Georgia to help on the ground, because it's not just the money game, but it's the ground game. So all eyes are in Georgia 
and the direction of our country is definitely going to be determined in yeah. Georgia in January. Well, and it's just like such a mess in Georgia in general as they continue to count the ballots that have mysteriously appeared. Um, you know, there's a lot of question about voter fraud in this election. The election hasn't been certified yet. Just a quick reaction to everything that we've seen the left and the Democrats tell us, oh, it's over. You know, Biden's the next president of the United States. But there are legitimate legal challenges happening, and there's so many examples of voter fraud in this election. How concerned are you about it? Uh, I, there's absolutely voter fraud going on. And if you look at just the state of Georgia, they accept mail-in ballots that aren't auth authenticated or voter ID. In Florida, you have to be a registered voter with a voter ID and show some type of uh, utility bill or something to register to vote. And then that registered voter has to request an absentee ballot. That ballot is then sent back with a barcode and the signatures have to match ensuring that Greg Stubbe in Sarasota, Florida is voting and not somebody else in their place. That's not happening in Georgia. These mail-in ballots are coming from they don't know where. There's no authentication. There's no voter ID. So you don't even know if it's somebody from Georgia or somebody that got their hand on one of these ballots that were mailed out to all the people in Georgia. There's absolutely voter fraud going on. It's got to be investigated. And I hope between now and January, the legislature in Georgia and the governor in Georgia puts a stop to these mail-in ballots that are not authenticated and you don't know where they're coming from to prevent voter fraud happening in January. Yeah, and President Trump had been warning about this for months and Republicans have been talking about it for months before the election and it's kind of all happening as we predicted. Now I wanted to give you a chance to talk about uh, legislation that you're introducing is to prevent the Chinese Communist Party uh, intellectual property theft by reforming student visa application process. So uh, explain, break it down for us. Yeah, if there's a student visa or a student's coming to our country and they're being funded in any way, shape, or fashion by the Chinese Communist Party, we should know about it as a country. There, it is rife with uh, spying on our country when you have students coming from the Chinese Communist Party or from China or that students from across the world are coming in that are paid for by the Chinese Communist Party. We as Americans should, should know that for the safety and security of our country, and we should not be having spying going on through our student visas. Well, thank you so much, Congressman. We appreciate your time. Yeah, thank you.